I'm Janice. Welcome to Wild Crafting. So today I'm going to be making a delicious elderberry chutney. But before I do, I'm going to take you to an elderberry tree and we're going to look at the berries and talk about how to harvest them. So follow me. Here in Southern California, we have blue elderberries. Now elderberries are large to medium shrubs or trees with lots of branches. And to identify it, you can see that they're compound leaves that grow opposite each other on the branch. And then the leaves also grow opposite one another on the stem. And each of the leaves has a serrated edge. In the spring, creamy white flowers appear that eventually develop into berries. The berries grow in large clusters and are often coated with a bloom of yeast, making them look light powder blue. Elderberries are harvested in late summer to early fall when the berries are fully ripe. To check for ripeness, squeeze some berries to make sure that they have purple juice inside. If the juice runs clear, they need more time to ripen because unripe berries are toxic. When preparing the elderberries, you need to first remove them from the stems because the stems are very toxic. And this is a little time consuming, but necessary. Just throw away the stems. And one easy tip is that if you freeze the whole cluster, it will make it a lot easier to remove the berries. So today, as I said, I'm gonna be making an elderberry chutney. So a chutney is really just a sweet and savory relish that goes really good alongside meat or maybe on a cheese plate. So I've taken a cup of our fresh berries. You can see the elderberries in the pot. And I've added one chopped red onion to it. And I've added one half cup water and then one cup a vinegar, which you could use any kind of vinegar that you have around the house, but I've used uh, half and half of white wine vinegar and a balsamic vinegar, just to add a little extra flavor. Now to this, I'm gonna be adding lots of spices. And right in here, if you can get, look at the spices. Right here I've got a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, ground cinnamon, ground ginger, and I have half a teaspoon of mustard seeds. I've added a pinch of ground cloves and a pinch of nutmeg. And all of these spices are gonna go right here into the pan with everything else. And I'm gonna mix them all together and then I'm gonna put them on the stove and we're going to heat this up to a boil and simmer it for 40 minutes. So I've brought the elderberries up to a boil and it's really important that you do that so that the heat will remove the toxins that are inside the seeds. I'm going to let this go and simmer now for another 30 minutes or so until we're ready to add some more ingredients. So I've taken this off the stove and now I need to separate the seeds from the pulp. And you could either do this with pressing it through a sieve, but I like to use a food mill, which is a little bit easier. And all it does is you turn it like this, and as it grinds, it's pushing the pulp through the bottom holes while it's separating the seeds that remain on the top. see that we're getting this nice thick pulp at the bottom which we're going to collect and we're going to heat up again with some other ingredients. So I finished putting this through the food mill and this is what 
the pulp looks like. All the seeds have been removed and all that's left is the fruit. So I've returned the pulp to the pot and now I'm gonna be adding some more ingredients. This is one and a half ounces of brown sugar. I have an ounce of raisins and I'm gonna add some chopped apple. This is about almost a full apple right there. And we're gonna put this back on the stove. So after boiling this for 15 minutes, this is what it should look like. It's kind of a, a jelly-like substance now and all the apples are tender and all the flavors have melded together. And now it's time to put it in the jar. So I'm just putting this in the jar now. And if you want this to last for quite a while on the shelf, you would need to melt some pectin and put it over the top and then add the lid. And it would stay on the shelf for quite a few months. Uh, but if you wanna eat it right away, which is what I'm gonna do, you would just pop the lid on and keep it in your refrigerator. Thank you for joining me today for Wild Crafting. We made some really delicious elderberry chutney and I can't wait to try this. I hope that you'll try it at home yourself. And uh, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time on Vulcan Mountain.